we pick up from Santa Claus, we are at Martin Luther. Martin Luther was right on some things, but dead wrong on the Christ child. He will have to give an account at the judgment seat of Christ, 1 Corinthians 3.15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire, Satan comes down where there's smoke and fire. Now Martin Luther, the Lutheran church, is the Catholic church with some tweets. With some changes, all he tried to do is take the Catholic church and clean it up. He couldn't clean it up, so he started his own Catholic church and Luther. Lutherans are following a man. Luther. I am a Christian. I follow Christ. So what we have now is a foundation of a religious foundation of Santa Claus. told you Santa Claus is religion there were men who were behind pulpits that wrote the story of twas the night before Christian uh, Christmas that was a man behind a pulpit of a church telling a lie to his daughters you do know the one that wrote the book about George Washington telling a lie about the, the cutting down the cherry tree that it was a lie you do know that he was a man behind the pulpit why are these preachers, why are these men behind pulpits supposed to be holding the Bible? Why are they being known for lies? You ever check out what Paul told the Corinthians about ministers of Satan? It's a shame that preachers stand in the pulpits and lie. And listen, you don't have to lie about Santa Claus. You don't have to make up stories about a president. I mean, you just get up there and you tell stories like they were your stories and all they are is preacher stories. And other lies. A lie is a lie, preacher. Whether well, it's white, pink, blue, polka dot. And you will stand at judgment for Jesus Christ for every lie. Knock it off. There's enough truth in the Bible that you don't need to lie about. Now we're going to go into a man who is a lie. That's worshipped all over the world. Worshipped by our government. And now we find Martin Luther tied to this lie. And yes, I'm angry. Be angry, sin not. Angry without a cause. I have a cause. This character is in Bible-believing churches today, in families. Children worship and want the return of Santa Claus on December 25th more than they want the return of Jesus Christ. That's a shame. This thing is written to Christians. The Christ kind, or German Christ child, and I can't pronounce it, is the traditional, there's that word again, there is that religious word, traditional. That comes along with the Catholic Church. Tradition in the Catholic Church is more than the Bible. What equals tradition is what men will say, rather than the Bible. He's a traditional Christmas gift bringer. In the regions of Austria, Czech Re uh, Republic, Croatia, parts of, of Germany, Italy, Portugal, Switzerland, Hungary, Fan France, the upper part of Poland, parts of Hispanic America, in certain areas of southern Brazil, and in the Arcadian region of Louisiana. This guy's worldwide. In Italy, it is called... Gispo Bambino, G E S U with a line over it, B A M B I N O, Portuguese, Minio Christ, uh, excuse me, Minio Jesus, M E N I N O J E S U S, and, and that means baby Jesus. In Hungary, Jeskak, J E Z U S K A, which means little Jesus in Soviet almost like J E Z I S K O again little Jesus in Czech J E Z I S E K little Jesus and in Croatian I S U S I C again little Jesus Santa Claus is an Antichrist this has started from Martin Luther 
So Christian, when you bring Santa Claus into your house, into your children, you are bringing another Jesus Christ. Think God approve of that? You think Jesus said, so, and I preach this, I try it when I see parents with children at the, at the farmer's market. When I see parents with children, I try to throw this verse out there as soon as I can. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come on to me. Did he not say that in the scripture, in the gospels? Then why do you suffer your little children to go to Santa Claus? Why do you bring them to the, to the store where Santa Claus is seated on his throne, supposedly the North Pole, with all the white representing snow, Isaiah 1. Now let's see what the Bible has to say about it, Mr. Luther. As you have lost rewards unless you repented of this mess. I hope you repented before you died, but you're dead now. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, baby Jesus, little Jesus, Christ child, whom we have not preached, or we have received another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which, which you have not accepted, ye might w well bear with him. Matthew 24, 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, Christ's child, and shall deceive many. Luke 21, 8. And he said, Take ye that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. The time draws near, go ye not, therefore after them. Mr. Luther of the Lutheran Church brought us to Christ child. From that Christ child we have the little Jesus, little Jesus, little Jesus. The Christmas gift bearer. Well, Jesus Christ was not the gift bearer. He wasn't even born on Christmas. Jesus Christ is the gift. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God. The gift bearer is God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You haven't read the scriptures. You're bringing into the church another Jesus. So listen, St. Nick, change the, sto change the stories of Jesus. We read that before. That's in previous videos or audios, however you listen to this. I read you the scripture and I showed you where he changed. He changed the Gospels to fit his life instead of Jesus. And the Bible warns you, Christian, against this man called Mr. Nicholas, Santa Claus, Father Christmas, or Saint Nick. He has become another Jesus Christ by religion. The name Nick. When you're shaving and you got to put a tissue on your face. The name Nick is of Greek origin, uh oh, Greek, and means victory of the people. Nicolaism, also Nicolaism, and then Nicolaus, and then big fancy words that you got to charge someone at college, is a Christian heresy who adheres and are called Nicolaitans. Nicolaito. Nickel translated from Latin is conquer. Saint Nick, conquer. Latin would refer to lay people. Nicolaitan, Nico, conquer. Latino, Latins, the people. Conquer the people. Conquer the people. So, Get back where relations would refer to the people or the laity, the lower people, them people. Hence the word can be taken to mean lay conquerors or conquerors of the lay people. Although more likely is simply the name given to the followers of a heretic, Nicholas. N-I-C-O-L-U-S. The name itself means victorious over the people, which he would have been given at birth. So Nick, Saint Nick, conqueror of the people, the lower form of people, the laity, those people, 
put himself up on a pedestal, put himself up on a ladder, put himself up on a pulpit. I'm higher than you guys, you laity. I'm going to conquer you. In essence, John would be right in Revelation, warned of bishops, of men, or of clergy who abuse their power in Revelation. And God said, I hate the Nicolaitans. That is a form of human worship that I hate. And you have Saint Nick Olus. Saint Nick. Nick. There's nothing godly about this Santa Claus at all. Publicized by Martin Luther, openly to discourage the figure of Saint Nicholas at the Protestant Reformation in 16th, 17th century Europe, many Protestants changed the gift bringer to the Christ child or Christ. C-H-R-I-S-T-K-I-N-D-L and the date of giving gifts changed from December 6th to Christmas Eve. So we'll move it away from the Roman Catholic Saint Day December 6th because we don't want to attach this Christ child to Saint Nicholas so we'll just move the date and we'll move it to Christmas Eve another heresy because if you're going to bring this to jesus christ the little jesus the christ child and we're going to put it on christmas eve he was not born on christmas you pick it up now you change from a, a dead birthday december 6th and now you change it to a babylonian holiday taken up by the church that you were supposed to clean you just soiled your pants more in the eyes of God. So, so here is Santa and Christmas, which we can date the 16th and the 17th centuries. Protestants. I'm not a Protestant. I'm a Baptist. Protestants are the daughters of Mother Whore. <coughs> Excuse me. Protestants and not God change the date. With the help of Martin Luther and the Roman Catholic Church, which he came out of, we have now this mess of Santa Claus, Saint Nick, on Christmas. I said, I hope Luther repented of this mess before he got saved. He lost rewards. Martin Luther has brought the children, not to God, as Jesus said, suffer the little children to come to me. Martin Luther brought the children to an Antichrist. A gift bringer fam familiar to children of Central Europe. The Christ kind bears little resemblance to the infant of, ba of Bethlehem. Well, of course, he's, he's older. The Christ kind was adopted in Catholic there's that word areas during the 19th century after his his date has been moved to December 24th now the Catholics are saying oh wait a minute hey we can we can get on this we'll adopt this while it began to be gradually replaced by more or less secularized version of the Saint Nicholas the wither in W E I H N A C H T S M A N N now whatever that word is pronounced if you're German you know that word you're probably laughing at me I'll tell you what that word means Father Christmas Santa Claus now this Christ child has become God the Father. There you go. We've seen Santa Claus come from the Roman Catholic Church. Now we're seeing Santa Claus coming from the Reformation, the Protestants. 
So I guess Santa Claus does go to Protestant homes and Roman Catholic homes. According to what we've read so far. Children never see the Christ kind in person. I've never seen Jesus Christ in person yet. That's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And parents tell them that Christ kind will not come and bring presents if they are probing or trying to spot it. So don't go looking for the gifts because they're supposed to be in the North Pole. And if you go try to find the gifts in the closet, wherever we hit them, he's not, you're not going to get them. Teaching children blackmail. Teaching the children embezzlement at an early age. The family enters the living room where the Christmas tree has been put up. Now we get a Christmas tree. For the opening of the presents, the B-E-S-C-A-T-R-U-N-G. When the parents say that they think that Christ Christkind who has brought the presents has now left again, in some traditions, the word, the exit is broadcast by the ringing of a small bell. Is that what churches do? Ring bells? Santa is religious. Churches rang bells. What time is it? The enemy's coming. Time for services. Now you ring a bell when Santa leaves. Which the parents make believe, tell a lie, script, to have heard, or which is secretly done by one of the adults in the family called lies. Someone in the family goes out and brings out all the kids, gifts under the tree, and then the parents start ringing the bells to the children. He's been here! He's here! He's here! I ain't waiting for a bell. I'm waiting for a trumpet. The sound of the trump. That's what I'm waiting for. You can ring all the dingalings you want. Dingalings follow this man. So go ahead and ring the bell of the dingalings that follow this, this mess. I'm to teach my children there to wait for a trump, not a dingaling. That Jesus is coming, not Santa. Now let's attack the Christmas tree, shall we? Jeremiah 22 through 6. Thus saith the Lord. We care what the Lord says, don't, no, not, not in the Catholic Church. We care what the Pope said. We care what the priest said. We care what the nuns said. We don't care what God has to say in, the, in that religious mess. And then we don't care what God says in the Lutheran Church if we still have Santa Claus. So say, let's save the Lord. I care what God says. Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Who oh, would end the times, end of the days, here come the crisis. For the heathen are dismayed at them. You know, if you're looking, oh, there's an earthquake here, there's, there's a flood over here. Oh, hey, Jesus. Yeah. But we're not to look at what's going around us. We're, we don't know when Jesus is coming. For the customs of the people are vain. Nothing. Empty. For one cutteth a tree out of forest. Okay, he goes out and cuts a tree. Nothing wrong with that. I've cut trees. I've cut trees and my dad got fired. What would we make money? The works of the hands of the, the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. Deck the halls with boughs of poly. La 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 la. La la la. Notice how God used that word, deck. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. In my home, we had a Christmas tree, and it was hilarious watching mom, dad, mom and dad. Is it straight? Is it going to hold? Is it going to stay? All right, looks good now. So you get the dogs and the cats in it. They are upright as a palm tree. Straight. No one gets a crooked tree. I've never seen anybody's house with a tree. <laughs> So it's going to be straight, fluffy, fat. But speak not. 
I grew up in a place where we would go to the mall and a, and an electronical tree would talk to you. And all these little elves would move and robotics. But it speaks not. They must needs be born. You have to carry it. The tree ain't going to come walk. Hey, hi guys, how you doing? Where do you want me to sit? Where do you want me to stand? Right over there? Okay. No, you got to do it. Because they cannot go. You got to throw the tree out. It will not walk out to the, to the street curb all by itself. Be not afraid of them. Why would you be afraid of a tree that has, I mean, and there are people who, the Yule log and all that, are afraid. Because that tree is godly. But they cannot do evil. You put them in the fireplace, you can make marshmallows and heat the place. Neither also it also is it in them to do good a tree can't but all the magicalness of a Christmas tree and I've seen so many Baptist churches well it's just we don't we, uh, 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 take it down throw in the garbage ain't gonna do nothing it's only going to distract your preaching. I've sat in churches where the Christmas, and I'd be like, oh, isn't that a pretty tree? Uh, well, what's he saying? It's a distraction. For as much, and yeah, some of the preachers I can think of with it, right, had the tree in his preaching. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There's nothing like the Lord, the God. Nobody can be like God. Not even a nice, pretty tree. You know, the children, I grew up in all that mess. Oh, Christmas morning, look at that beautiful tree. What about the beautifulness of Jesus when he comes for us? When that trumpet's blown instead of dingling? When we will finally see Jesus face to face, what about the gloriness of that? Thou art great, the Lord, not the tree, and thy name is great in my. You know, Jeremiah said about that tree is absolutely nothing. It's stupid. It's work to the heathen. You're wasting your money. And you can't even burn the tree. And the sap and all that messes up your chimney for next year when Santa comes down in. Well, burn that tree, put the sap in there, let that guy get a, a dirty clothes so he has to go to the laundry and pay more money. <laughs> up on the housetop, click, click, click. I just shot old St. Nick. Now I'm probably going to go to jail for that. John 8 44. Anybody comes down through my chimney, that's breaking an entry. You will be arrested. But this is guy's never been caught because he's alive, so don't worry about it. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and bold not in the truth. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, honey, tell the kids the presents are done. Tell them that the Christ Christ has already come. Ring the bell. Hi, boss. Oh, I can't go to work today. I'm just really sick. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow. All right, let's go. That's a lie. When you get out of that pulpit and you tell a story that's not your story, that's a lie. That's Satan. You gotta be careful with that big mouth of yours. Matthew chapter 11, 23 or 32. I think I'm probably getting that verse. Every idle word you will give an account. When you tell your children about this fictional character, this Satan, this Antichrist, and you're saved, you're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and it's going to burn unless you put it under, uh, under the blood of Jesus Christ. Not you're going to burn. Your lies are going to burn and you're going to lose rewards. And you may turn your children from Jesus Christ to the Christ child. The little Jesus. This Jesus, this phony, this Antichrist cannot save you. Only Jesus saves the real thing. This is getting me going. When he speaks of lies, he speaks of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. Father Christmas. That's all a lie. You tell that fat pumper to come to my door right now this week. I want to see him can't do it he's a lie father lies that's Satan 
John 8 44 the liar parents and Satan are murderers of children's souls in the name of Santa Claus how many homes have been brought up with Santa Claus and when it's come time to those children to know about Jesus Christ they have turned away from Jesus Christ as their Savior because of Santa Claus Matthew 18 6 but whosoever shall fed one of these little ones which believe in me well woe they woe if you got children who believe in Jesus Christ and you're bringing this mess into them parent I feel sorry for you It'd be better for, for him that a millstone be hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the death of the sea. Listen to me. This video is to born-again Bible-believing Christians. If you don't know Jesus Christ, this is not for you. This is just lesson, history, the truth, the fact. But if you're a Bible-believing Christian and you got this mess in your house, you are in deep trouble with God. God said if I were just take a big rock, tie it to your neck, and throw you off in the depths of the water. You'll still stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. From page one, this guy has been an antichrist. Oh, see, when we think antichrist, we think about, ooh, that one true antichrist who's going to come and give us a section. Oh, Christian, don't take the mark. Oh, Christian, we don't need to worry about that mess. We're going to be gone before that. We will be gone before the wicked one. But John tells the, the, the elect lady in 2 John, there are antichrists. Paul tells us there'll be another Christ, another Jesus. Here he is, one of them, of many. In my time of the news and, and media and stuff like that, I have seen many people come up and profess to be Jesus. Wacko, Texas. Some guy in uh, North Korea. All be claimed to be the Messiah. And Chris Kringle. He's the oldest so far of the group, I would think. Chris Kringle with K's. American eyes pronunciation and spelling of Christ Kindle. So when you say Chris Kringle, I'll get away from Martin Luther, the little Jesus in the Christ. No, Chris Kringle is the Christ card. That is the Christ child. We have changed the name to protect the identity, but still the same. Chris Kringle, sometimes even as Chris Kringle, he has an extra S in there for serpent, is named used in the United States and may refer to the Christ kind or the Christ kind when that's got an L in it, and the Austrian and German Christmas gift bearer. It's the same one. It's the same Antichrist with another name. The Christ child. Santa Claus by incorporation in the United States of the separate German tradition. So it goes all in one bag. It's a sin. No matter what you call this guy. It's a sin. The secret Santa. A gift give and take this descending from the Chris kind, Christ kind. The little Christ, Martin Luther, the Chris King. Tradition. Secret Santa is a tradition from the Christ card. The, the baby Jesus. We read about over here. The Christ child. The secret Santa comes from Jesus Christ. Is Santa Claus as the Christ child. How many Baptist churches have that? I can tell you three right now. And your pastor's not even teaching you it's a lie, it's a sin. Nice church. Judgment seat's coming, pastor. You can't say ignorance. Christian. 
if you are listening to this and your church is involved in this mess, you give these series to your pastor and tell him, I tell you to put it in his lap for him to learn what, what God has to say. Put it in his lap. If you got secret Santa, you got Christmas tree, and you got Santa in your church, you give him these messages. If he wants to be mad with me, he can get behind the line and take a deli number. I'll call him eventually. Or God will call him by his number. Tradition. Secret Santa is a tradition from the Christ kind. Christ, Chris Kringle, the lead character of the Miracle on 34th Street. Ah, oh, here comes Hollywood. I had to watch that movie every year, thank you. One of my family members. Who's now saved. I hope they're not involved in this mess. Probably still are. There are satanic activities in the Church of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about the Latter-day Saints. I'm talking about the Baptist Church. Secret Santa is a wicked combination. And you may not even know it. And it's your job of your pastor to tell you. It's the job of your pastor when somebody brings something to the church that is deceptive. That's the work of Satan. To get up in that pulpit and to publicly denounce that thing. It was said that the angelic figure, often accompanied by Saint Nicholas, oh man, now we're getting the angels. Santa has a protective angel. Martin Luther has Mr. Nicholas, the Roman Catholic Church, and his Christ child, accompanied by angels. Now, angels visited men and women in the Bible, but they didn't accompany them unless they were with Jesus. And then after they ministered to Jesus, they left. Jacob saw the most angels as far as I believe. And then they left. And here's another attack on the Bible to steal from the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God is in the company of the angels right now. Angels are all over God and Jesus Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father. No, they are accompanied with the Christ child or St. Nicholas. Don't you see? Now he's taken on God. Now he's taken on Jesus Christ by the company of the angels. Mark 4.11 Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Luke 22.43 there appeared an angel unto, he, unto him from heaven, strengthening him. John 1 51. He saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Angels accompany Jesus, not Santa. Okay. Next. I'm going to spell it. You're Swedish? Forgive me. J-U-L-T-O-M-T-E-N. That's Sweden. Which means Jaw. J-U-L. Which means Christmas. J-U-L is Christmas. T-O-M-T-N. Household fairy or elf. Shogjotment. I'm just trying to pronounce it. Means a Christmas fairy or elf. Oh, oh. You see where we're going with this one now? You know, Christ Mass Elves. They have white beard. Red cap. They live in dark places in the house. And they are traveling by sleigh drawn by a jobuk. J U L B O C K, a Swedish Christmas drumbo goat. Scapegoat. Goat worshiped by Satan. The early Santa Claus of Sweden was naughty. Jeremiah 24 2 3. 
One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. The other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I see figs, good figs, very good. And the evil, very evil. According to Jeremiah 24, 2 and 3, naughty means evil. Hey, thank you, Sweden. Thank you, Swedish. You have now given us an attribute of Satan, evil. Elf who guarded the homestead like Jonosi, J-U-L-N-I-S-S-E of Denmark. He too had to be bribed. <laughs> Milk and cookies? Psalms 26.10 In whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. Job 15.34 For the congregation of the hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. Amos 5.12 For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take bribes. First Samuel 8, 3 and 5. His sons walked not in the way, but turned aside after lucre, took bribes, prevented judgment. Then the elders of Israel. Bribes. Bribes. Are not something for a Christian to do according to the Bible. But hear this thing. They take bribes to achieve favors. Well, that's a that's a good something to have around. What happens when you run out of bribes? The well-known animal, regarded as clean under Leviticus economy, having a large place in sacrifices, goats formed an important item in the property of the patriarchs. Daniel's prophecy of the kingdoms that Greece would compare to a rough goat, rough ho he goat, but with a notable horn between his eyes. Daniel 8, 5, 8, 21, the goats in the seasonal judgment of the living nations represent the lost in contrast to the saved, which are compared to sheep. Sheep are the saved, the goats are the lost. Jesus said the second advent, I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep go into the millennium, the goats go to hell. Here's a guy riding a goat. The wild goats, oh, wait a minute, uh, Matthew 25, 32, 33, the wild goats were large animals, lived on the mountains. 1 Samuel 24, 2, Job 39, 1, Psalms 104, 18. Usually a family member, now we got the family. We got the family together thanks to, oh, the Christ kind. Chris Kringle. Now we got the whole family involved in this mess. Usually a family member or a neighbor would dress up as a jokeman. Oh, now we got dressing up as this idiot. Often use a mask to disguise their face. Protect the identity. Paint the face. Jezebel. The visit would follows a traditional formula. There's that word again. With Jotaman, I'm saying this word wrong, I'm sorry, asking, are there any good children here? Well, I guess he's not God, because God, behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the good, and I mean the evil and the good. This guy doesn't even know. Before distributing of his burden of presence. Burden of presence? You mean what he's got to carry? We saw this with the German Christ kind, the Martin Luther, the Sweden, and we are studying about Holland and New York mess. The same character is Satan, disguised as Santa and Jesus Christ. Halloween. Remember December 6th was his death day? So what happens today at Walmart? They get the Christmas stuff right out after Halloween. Do you ever know that? Do you ever wonder when Halloween's over? Not, wow, they got Christmas. What's going on here? Boy, they're being quick. No, they're being satanic to this guy Santa Claus. See, American holidays are not holidays. They're unholy days. And they're in the church. Trunk or tree. Stop 
Sabotage that pass to four times and pull him out three. First King 14, 5. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, for it shall be when she cometh in that she will frame herself to be another woman. What, what, what would you say about that? How, how could I would say they would script the, the children to be somebody who they're not. Skipped. Skipped. Because we can't call it script because that's Hollywood. So we'll come up with our own word. We'll come up with a Christian word. We'll put Jesus to it. It's a Christian skip. It's of hell. This woman's doing the same thing Hollywood's doing, and this woman's doing the same thing that, that the teens are doing in church. They are changing their name, just as Santa Claus has changed his name, to protect the innocent. Remember? The Christ kind is also Chris Kringle. See, we can't go after, we can't name Christ, so we'll call him Chris Kringle. That's the same thing. This is another name. It all comes under, open up the file cabinet, John 8, 44. Okay, slip it right in there. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you like. It's the truth. First Samuel 28, 8. Sam, uh, Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. He went in, two men with him, and they came out. They came to the woman by night. He said, I pray thee, divine unto me the familiar spirit, bring me him up. So you see, we see Halloween. Mixed in with this worship of Christmas and Santa. We have seen now his day move from December 6th to December 24th. We have seen him with many names. Jesus Christ has many names. He's the word. He's the water of life. He's the door. He's the shepherd. He's the word. This guy, he's Santa Claus, he's Chris Kine, he's Chris Kringle, he's this guy, he's a Jolton, he's a St. Nicholas, he's... Don't you see now? This guy is, and not the, and Antichrist. And if you were to go to Baptist churches, I said, this is for the saved. If you were to go to Baptist churches, say a week before Christmas, any year, and as the kids are coming out, stop and say, can I just ask your child a question? A couple days before Christmas, a week before Christmas, and that child comes out, and stop them all, if you can. They probably won't let you, once they find out what you're doing. Say, Excuse me, son. Excuse me, little girl. Who do you want to come? If you could have anybody come right now, who would you want? Who do you think the answer would be? Come on, parent. What would your child say? What if, what if, I'm not, I'm not dating nothing. Don't say I'm dating anything. But let's say Jesus Christ came December 23rd. Would your children be unhappy that he came on the 23rd and didn't get a chance to see Santa Claus? Would December 23rd or the 24th upset your children if Jesus Christ raptured us? Probably upset some adults. And we got more. We're not done yet. We're going to try to press this Lord willing all the way. Say, so why are you doing this? Well, first of all, honest, I, this was one of my course commentaries. This is a commentary I wrote. Graded an A. 100%. What made you think of this? Because I know Christians who are involved in this mess. And because of this character, they're no longer my friends.
You want to talk about Christmas trees? You want to talk about those friends? You want to talk about the Easter Bunny? You want to talk about those friends? I have lost Christian friends who turn and rat in on my family because of Santa Claus, because of the Easter Bunny, because he don't do that. Now listen, if you're if you don't if you didn't know any better, and you're just hearing this, come out. It will be hard. Because who knows how many years you've been doing this. But come out. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And no sin leaves our lives without a, without a fight. And you're going to have to do it gradually. You're, gradually. This Christmas coming up. Alright, take Santa Claus out. Keep the tree. Be careful what the hymns you're going to sing. Best go cold turkey, but if you got children, you're going to have to sit down and explain to them. You're going to have to swallow some of that pride and say, you know what? I, as your father, as your mother, we lied to you. And it may have caused some serious scars or will. I'm not bashing no Chris. I'm just trying to show you the facts. When I get angry, I'm angry at, at preachers and people who know better who, who allow this stuff in. Because they don't want to offend anybody. I ain't sick of that word. They don't want to drive anybody out to church. They may be the biggest givers. But you're going, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day. I want you as pure as you can be. But if you're going to be involved in this mess, it'll be wood, hay, or stubble. And that stuff burns up. There is no rewards. And realize what you're doing right now as a parent, you're, you're doing to your children. And they're going to do it to their grandchildren. And they're going to do it to their great, your great grandchildren. They're going to do it, Lord willing, their great great grandchildren. And Lord willing, they're going to do it their great 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 grandchildren. It's like the Catholic Church. It's just traditions that go on. We keep seeing that word tradition. This is something that needs to be stopped. It needs to be stopped now. You got to build a dam before you. This damns your family. You got to put a wall up with no door and no window. And it may take time. Took me many years. I don't bash anybody. You know, you're in it and, and you want to get right and, you, and you're like, wow. Never realized that. Neither did I. You have to be told. That's what my that's what part of my work is is to study things out so I can tell you what the truth is. And your pastor's not doing his job. If he's not telling you what the truth is, not telling you what to do and how to do. The Bible says, study show thyself approved unto God and workman that needs not to be shamed. Rightly divine the word. Now what this guy is doing right here. The Santa Claus. Is this something that you can honestly say. Yeah I can keep it and it won't bother me and God. That's the question. Pick up next time Lord willing.